Hello everyone, this is Angie Meyer, um, Bub Mai on Instagram and on here. I think you can find me that way. Welcome to my channel. This is my 16th video, I believe. I think so, it's 15. Um, welcome back. The last one was, I looked, it was on January 7th and I meant to do another one. I've meant, I've had great intentions. You would think I've had, we've had four snow days. We had three we had four in January. We had four snow cold days in January. And so my intention was, oh, I'm going to get, oh, this will be great. I'm going to get a floss due done. And then my house kept me really busy doing stuff that I don't want to do in summertime. So here I am, finally. Um, first off, let's talk about Afghans. This I'm pulling out because I'm going to talk a lot about my grandma today. And so I pulled out an Afghan that she made me. She made this for me back in probably 1978. It's just um, got blue on the head, on the top, um, and blue on the bottom, and then lots of white in the middle. It's a very, it's a very big afghan. My grandma was a tall lady, so this is double folded here. It's, um, it's very long. Um, it's nice and wide. It's nice and thick and warm. Um, I have, we live out in the country and we have a well, so I don't wash this at my house, obviously. It would be a lovely um, shade of dingy yellow, so I've protected this very much, so if it needs to be washed, I have to take it to my mother-in-law's house. Um, but I, my grandma stitched this. I have no idea, I'll show it up close. I have no idea what you call that stitch but she was such a good crocheter. Oh my gosh, such a good crocheter. Um, so as I was looking for some things to show you about um, cross stitch and, and as I was, um, I've been cleaning my house. My husband freaks out at least once a month about the basement because I can't seem to get rid of things like I have all the boys' Legos. I have all their Brio trains. I have Star Wars toys. I have those things that I'm hoping, I mean, I'm sad about some toys that we had as kids that my mom got rid of. So I'm sure the boys won't give a flying flip, but I wanna be the cool grandma who has fun toys someday. So as I was cleaning, I found two calendars, two cross-stitch calendars. And cause I save my calendars, cause I think it's fun to go back and look at all the all the things that we have written down and things we were doing and remembering and it's and it's a lot of fun and my husband like I'm like look what we were doing look how busy we were but I'm cracking up so I got one in 1988 this was the year we got married and I'm dying laughing I don't know if I like didn't want to write on these um, there's nothing there is almost nothing written um, till after we were married we got married in June of 88 and then all my like school things that I had to do is written is written on there and there's not there's not a whole lot and it's written in pencil very lightly but this um, so this was put out by Hallmark um, and the designer of all of these her name was Sarah Turf Spa S-P-A-W and I googled her before I um, before I uh, came on and nothing, nothing shows up for her, except on Amazon, you can get a used copy of this one in 1989, and it says it's in good condition. Um, and it's the same designer. I don't know why the next year I didn't, I don't know that I got one. I'd have to go downstairs and look in my pile, but there's some pretty designs in here. Um, there's some things in there. So then I got to this one, I went, oh! I made that and I happen to have it. I made it for my niece Sarah for um, when she was, oh gosh, she must have been three or four, probably four. I loved, I always loved to stitch on sweatshirts when the kids were little. Um, but there were some cute designs in here. And then the designs were all in the back. But then as I found that sweatshirt that was Sarah's, I found this sweatshirt. I think I might have made for um, my son, John. 
I'm trying to see what size it was. It was a two toddler. This is a two toddler, so he was obviously kind of little. So I loved to do that. And then when I got into the cedar chest, then I found this gem. And this hung on all the boys. I made this, this is 1991, because I know that this was hanging in my oldest um, room. And we did not know when we had what we're having for the first one. After that, we knew they were all boys. Happy we were all boys. We just wanted healthy babies. Okay. Um, I had, uh, was it last weekend or the weekend before I went on a finishing binge and went crazy finishing. And so let's should, let's see what I'll start with. Um, I had finished January, probably like, this is the snowflower diaries. I probably finished this like January 28th or 29th, something like that. It was a late finish and I did not on purpose. You see down here, those are, I don't know if those are Algerian eyelets. I don't remember what they were. Sorry, my um, lacing in the back, I didn't trim off all the things. It was driving me nuts. But there was, you were supposed to come back in the middle here with a darker green, this green up here, and do them and they were fine, but I just didn't enjoy them. And after, I think I've done my second one, I went, I ain't doing the green ones. And I think it looks just fine. So I got that done. And then I did February. And this is also the Snowflower Diaries. I really like these ducks. I got them done. I probably, I could have gone and hung this up downstairs, but I didn't. So these go on a... Um, a piece of wood that I painted white. I have Velcro on here and then I just put, I'll put some, um, I've laced this over a piece of mat board that has, um, I don't think it's right here. It's a piece of fluffy stuff. Sorry, I can't think of the name of it. And um, then I'll put, a, um, my brain stopped felt. I'll put some felt on the back. I'll put felt on there and then it'll hang up there for the month. Of course it's March and I think Thursday night or Friday night I pulled the threads to do do March. So I'll get those done. Um, and then I finished while I was having fun. Just Cross Stitch Magazine did a series of this little bunny. Um, oops. This little bunny. <laughs> And uh, this is the only one I've gotten. I have all the patterns, but this is the only one I have done so far. And so um, they're selling these little easels at Meijer for, I think, $1.98. It's like every time I happen to go to Meijer, I'll grab a couple. And they just make cute little, just a cute little stand. I still could finish this into a flat fold, like a, you know, a Bonify bonnet. So it's a easel on its own, but that was as far as I got that night because I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. And then I had finished um, this Lizzie Kate, Do Small Things with Great Love, and I happened to have this black frame, so I um, put it on the board and popped it right in there. Happy with that. And then when I went to Stitch Away, I said I was going to do something Snoopy because I love Snoopy and I have several books and I haven't done very many Snoopies. And so I picked out this little pattern of Snoopy um, getting mail. It was a Valentine one. Um, there's a series of him walking and then putting a Valentine in a mailbox, but I just did this one. And then I just added this heart fabric and I have this Snoopy Valentine fabric that I added to it just to make a cute little pillow. So I was excited for that. And then Hands on Design, Kathy gave, um, had on her blog or her website, this free pattern that you could have, Love is Kind. And it came with the, the template. And so I did that. 
and she used gassed threads um, on hers, but I just picked out some pinks, a pink and a red, kind of a maroony red that I liked. And then I had this, that was part of my cleaning out downstairs in my scrapbook um, supplies. I had this lace crocheted little doily and I added a Jabco button. And then I've never made a um, a yo-yo. Um, a yo-yo is like a quilting thing where you take a round circle of fabric and I think you're supposed to fold over a, a little seam allowance and then you stitch a running stitch all the way around it and then you pull it tight and it pulls it all in um, and it makes a little pleated circle. I didn't do the hem allowance because it was a small circle, but I used this back, same backing fabric and I made that and then I popped a Jabco button on that one too. Kind of is helping to hide that um, doing rounded edges isn't... Uh, I need to practice that a little bit. So I have a little wonk going on there and that kind of hides some of my wonky, but I'm happy with it because it's finished and it's cute. So that was all, that's all my fully finished projects. And then I told you in my last video that I was doing something for my grandmother for, in memory of her. And it was by Blackbird's Design, Blackbird Designs, it's called Clara Ellen. There's a series of, there's a whole series that goes with this. Um, so here's my finished piece, and I changed where it said Clara Ellen to her name, Mary Savasi, and put in there, she was my, she's my great-grandmother. So I had to kind of, I fudged this piece, like, partially on purpose, partially because I got busy watching TV and didn't pay attention. Um, somebody pointed out to me because I this this border here is not exactly like the border this flower yeah it's not exactly like the border but I um, that was an accident but it worked out perfectly because I needed to move everything over because there said dear sister and obviously dear grandmother is a lot longer so um, it worked out perfectly for me um, her birthday her birth year she was born in 1911 and she passed away in 2003. Um, I'm happy with it. But I did make some fudges to the borders to make it to make it work. So I'm going to take this to Hobby, not to Hobby Lobby. I'm going to take this to a local framing housewares kind of place. They've been in the framing business, business for a very long time. They do a beautiful job. The um, gals who work the framing shop and the guy um, are fabulous. And so my plan is, and I totally am borrowing this whole thing from Heidi Cran, who does floss tube. She's out of Canada. Um, she did this in memory of her grandmother. And so I've been searching for what am I going to put in there what else am I going to put in with my grandmother? So, um, for sure, for sure, I'm going to put in, when I think of my grandma, the image of my grandma that comes to hit my head is this picture of my grandmother. This was taken probably in the early 70s. Um, my grandmother, and there's a resemblance, those cheeks. Um, uh, my grandma had the best smile and she had the most infectious laugh ever. Um, we used to go spend the night and she had a small shotgun um, apartment building that she lived in and we would sleep on the dining room floor and you could see into the living room and grandma would watch Johnny Carson and just belly laugh, just belly laugh. And that just always brings such a smile to my face thinking of her and her belly laugh. Um, so, so that's going to go in there. And then I was searching for what else. And so I found her a card where she wrote love. She wrote, love you grandma. So I think I'm going to cut that out and put that in there. And then I picked out two of her doilies that she made. Um, the square one. And then this little round one. So I'm going to put those in there. Um, I 
grandma was a very, oh, oh, and I'm going to put one of her rosaries in there. When we went through her house after she died, I lost count on how many rosaries she had. She had a very strong devotion to Mary and um, prayed the rosary a lot. I picked out a couple of pictures. My grandma um, always battled her weight and I've got old like little journals and little writings and stuff. I've got I've Hungarian cookbooks and I and there would be a clipping in there and she had would have bit of written down, you know, how much she weighed and what did she eat that day and she was on a 1200 calorie diet and she was always striving to lose weight. Well, then I think I was in high school, college, she developed hypothyroidism and then she struggled to keep 119 pounds on her five foot, see I'm five four, she was probably five seven, five eight, um, and she lost a lot, a lot of weight. But here she is at my son Matthew's baptism with all, those are all of her great grandkids. Um, but she just, she still kept her smile, um, but she was skinny. But she loved us fiercely and loved those kids so much. So I miss her. She'd be proud of her grandkids and her kids. Um, okay, so finished grandma. My whips. What do I have going on? I have a lot going on. Well, let me find them. Oh, wait. Let's go back. Let's talk about a couple of other things. Let's talk about the stitch away that I went to. Um, Nicole Beckeye Stitcher said, hey, come to stitch away. And I wasn't going to go. Um... And then life and the winter and I'm like, okay, I'll go. So I went. It was great to have um, that time away. It was a very nice retreat. Met some very lovely, lovely ladies. Lots of um, sewing, lots of sewing done. And uh, we stayed at the, I'm not going to remember the name of it, but in Ohio was a state park. Hang on, I've got it right here. Because I'd like to go back again. The park was so nice. I'd like to go back again. Oh, Houston Woods. Houston Woods State Park. Literally, that's what it looks like. Gorgeous. The rooms were huge. You can see a picture of a room there. Rooms were huge. There was a balcony. Not that I went out there because it was too doggone cold and snowing and raining. Um, but it was lovely. And um, Cecilia Turner, right? Cecilia Turner of Heart and Hand came. And so we all got these little thread keeps. And here's one of my whips, um, this spread kindness design. And everything to go with it to make that, like, all the thread and the fabric and the chenille. So there's one of my whips. That's as far as I've gotten. I need to put something behind that. So slowly working on that. My attention span has been like nil and work has been tiring and I've, there's been a couple times I've come home and one night it was at seven o'clock, I was in bed, I was out. So, and then we were gifted these by Cecilia with everything in it and the finished product. This is mounted on this wire frame. And so we got the frame as well, which was fabulous. I was so good, you guys. I told you that I was going to do Stitch from Stash. Um, I had been, I've been keeping track of my what I've spent and things like that. I did really, really good. Um, I did great for January. And that retreat was in January. And I did, I did really well. I purchased this. I was tempted by a lot of things, but I purchased that. And then I checked my money and I had some Christmas money. So I spent, bought this piece of fabric. And I bought this 
piece of wood because we were gifted in our little treat bag, we were gifted some patterns. I can't show you because it's just the pattern there aren't any pictures, um, but it goes on here and that's it. Now, I was tempted. I was like, doggone it, I really want, and I can't even tell you what it was I really wanted, but I really want that. And so I went all the way back up to my room, which I was, um, it's a really big, really, really big place. And I was exactly in the room as farthest as you could get from where the stitching room was. And so I walked all the way there and I got my money and I walked all the way back thinking about it. And I got to the hallway almost to where everybody was sewing and I went to my seat and put my money in my bag and I didn't go buy it. Would have put me over budget and I didn't do it. So, and I don't feel, and I didn't, you know, obviously I, I didn't have to have it because I, it's not bothering me and I can't even tell you what it was that I was going to go buy. So, I do have to confess that I'm having a really hard time looking at anything from the Nashville retreat this weekend because I'm, it's, it's killing me. So I'm kind of not looking. Although I did order something and I realized in the month of February, like I ordered it in February. I called, I emailed and, and to get something. And at the end of the month, I was like, oh, well, I don't have to call. What I ordered doesn't go on February because I haven't paid for it yet. I just ordered it. So that's March. And so in February, I bought, I needed a skein of floss and I needed some fabric that I went to Hobby Lobby for and had a 40% off coupon and I bought this. I think I'm at $12. That's it for the month of February. Go me. Um, Back to Stitchway. So they had a freebie table and I didn't, I didn't grab very much, but I saw this that I thought was... These little watermelons I thought were cute. And oh, that was something we were giving. And then I love Susie Reno. Um, I've met her a couple times. And so when I see one of her patterns, I always snatch it up, whether if I'm buying it or if I'm um, buying it or it's on the freebie table. So I thought that'd be cute for March. And then my husband and I got married in Terre Haute, Indiana, because we met at school at Indiana State. And Larry Bird played for Indiana State, and he was a big, a big deal. Um, there was, for a long time, a hotel, Larry Bird's Boston Connection. And that's where the guests for our wedding stayed. And the shower curtains had the Boston Celtics logo on it and the towels and there was a lot of memorabilia and things like that. So that's kind of, my husband was in college then or no, 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 take it back. He wasn't in college then. He was in high school then, but lived in town. So he saw Larry Bird play for Indiana State. So we kind of have ties. So I saw this and of course there's Larry, you know, the Boston connection right on the front. And so I had to give that and I'll stitch that up for my husband sometime. So I did good. So, and thank you for your encouragement because I wasn't going to spend any money and you're all like, you better not do that because you'll, you won't last and you'll go crazy and you guys are right. So, okay, my whips. Let's see what I got. So in honor, um, this is one of my whips I started. I think I started this in the fall. Mr. and Mrs. Delicious. Um, I decided that I back way back when that I was going to do this as both of them together as one piece. And so here is where I am so far. I got the, the border down by the bottom. I'm still working on Mrs. Delicious. So that's been cruising along. I know it's not Thanksgiving, but eh, that's okay. Then I'll have it done for Thanksgiving. Although I will tell you, I'm kind of superstitious and it's because of my boys that I'm superstitious in their sports playing. I think I've talked about this before, but I'm tired of the snow and the cold weather. I've had enough. And so anything winter related, which I guess 
technically winter doesn't start to December, so Thanksgiving's more fall, so I'm okay there. Um, anything, snowmen, they got put away. S Santa Claus stuff, it got put away, because I want this winter weather to stop. I'm willing the spring weather to come, and soon, and today it's snowing sideways, and it's been snowing, and it hasn't stopped, and our ground, our snow was all gone, and now it's all back again. So if everybody could please put away their snowmen, that would be awesome. Um, I did, I told you guys that I um, joined the So Much to Love bag of the month club. Only I'm not getting all 12 months. I only subscribed to six. You could kind of pick um, which months you wanted. And so I'm getting, I think, February, April, May, June, October. I don't know. February, May, February, April, June, October. I don't I don't know. I'm getting six. I wish I could remember, but I, I can't. So here's the bag. It's adorable. The pink gingham inside. It's just adorable. And it came with some red chenille and a cookie needle miter. My husband was like, I guess he doesn't know what a needle minder is or he wasn't paying attention to me. He was like, she sent you a cookie? She made you guys all those cookies? I'm like, it's a needle minder. And then this little pattern. Because I could remember the greatest joy was going over to my grandma and my aunt's house and they had a manual typewriter and just we all took turns playing on that manual typewriter. I wish I'd kept it. I wish I'd kept it. So in this little pouch... Um, I have the, it's the mini bunnies pattern. So there was the one that I showed you that I finished only I did in purple. I had that turquoise and I really like the turquoise. Um, I'm just using the shamrocks out of this. This was the April 2018 edition. And I've been merrily sewing along making shamrocks. That I'm going to, I think, cut out to make individual. I can't decide, am I going to make little flat folds, you know, and maybe put it like on here? Am I going to make little pillows? Am I going to make, you know, something little like this and put a little hanger on it? I haven't decided that part. But I did go to, um... I did go to Joanne Fabric and found this adorable fabric and I got this green rickrack. So we'll see what I come up with. They were having a buy, buy a few, get something free. Buy a few, get a few free or something. So I got that green rickrack and then I got these two blues. Which I thought were pretty. Okay, so I'm working on that. And Mr. and Mrs. Delicious. And then in my desire for spring to come, I pulled out Little House Needleworks Welcome Spring. And when I I had already started this, and when I had had, I, all I had was this done, and now I've worked farther on the bottom grass and the sheep's legs, and the sheep, the wool of the sheep have started. I think those are the, th the four, those are the four that I've mainly been working on, um, and busy plugging away. Although I did, I've been looking at people's things on floss tube and people talking about spring and I started going spring I need bunnies I need something and so I went through and I pulled out a bunch of stuff so I pulled out heartstring samplery these are ba uh, little fobs and that bunny down here is just adorable and there's a bluebird and those pretty flowers there's the, everything on there is pretty, but um, I found this Lizzie Kate that I had. 
Spring Smalls, Spring Smalls, number 190. And then I, um, the little, these are the three of the little needleworks, little house needleworks sheep series that I have. I just have these three. So I don't, I think they're timeless. I don't necessarily think that they have to be spring. I mean, this one, this one is kind of, um, Christmassy, I think a little bit. It doesn't have to be though. I can change up the colors a little bit. So I found those. And then the Primitive Hair Awakening, that cute sheep. And it's in a uh, Snowflower Diaries. I think Vana just might have shown this one. And that one, the Snowflower Diaries, I believe was a freebie, I believe. Um, but then I found this little prairie schooler, a rabbit. And then baseball season starting, people. Little House Needleworks. So, um, I will make sure... This will say the Cubs, and they'll have a nice high score. To be ornery, I might write the Reds at a really low score. Not the Reds, the Red Sox. Just to be ornery to somebody. Points if you figure out. Bonus points if you know who I'm talking about. Um, okay, la di da. This says at the bottom, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. This is called Peace on Earth. And I saw this when I was at um, the Fancy, Re Fancy Works Retreat last year. And we used to sing that in church all the time. And my dad then would come outside singing it. So it made me think of him. I thought, oh, I have to make that for him. So I got a... I think that's everything on my list. I got a beautiful Valentine card, a handmade Valentine card, which I love snail mail. I love sending out snail mail. I've got some snail mail downstairs I need to send out. Um, but I got a poem about a DMC poem and was gifted 817 and the 817 poem. And I was really intrigued by it. I'm like, Holy for holy. That is so cool. So, of course, I had to go and get, I had to find this book. So this is called The Very Stuff by Stephen Beale. I got it on Amazon. And it says in the book jacket, in The Very Stuff, Stephen Beale offers readers the opportunity to experience an artist's concept of beauty as through poetry. He explores meanings, memories, stories, and emotions evoked by colors of embroidery floss. An accomplished fiber artist, Beale finds that colors are magic carpets for his mind and for his heart. Join him for a journey through these joyful, evocative celebrations of the stuff that he loves best, the stuff of color says, um, for the most part, he was raised in Evanston, Illinois, and during World War II, he lived with his family in Pittsburgh, a city that serves as a setting for many poems in this collection. A 1960s graduate of Williams College who did graduate work at Oxford, Beale is the author of five nonfiction books. His needlepoint canvases have been exhibited around the world and figure in many private collections. So I just, I just had to have it. I'm not a huge, okay, the extent of my poetry, real knowledge is Shel Silverstein. So this poem is 3750. I wonder if I have 3750 down here. Pardon me as I just disappeared off screen. Oh, I do have 3750. Okay, let me put something behind it first. Did it really come out that well? 
When I was a little boy, I had a storybook about the making of a suit, a blue suit for a boy who lived in the country on a farm. His father sheared the wool for the suit from the sheep, and then his mother carded the wool and spun it, and dyed it in a vat of indigo. She hung the hanks of wool on a line, where they turned the gr green grass blue as they dried. Then she wove this blue wool into worsted and sewed a suit for the, from the cloth for her son. Hello, 3750. The last time we met, I was sitting beside my mother, looking at the pictures while she read me that story. The first grown-up suit I had was blue, and I wore it to Miss Pocock's dancing class with white cotton gloves and a blue, red silk, blue and red silk tie. My ears stuck out. My pompadour was carefully arranged. I never thought of the contribution of sheep to my stylish appearance. I was learning the foxtrot and the rumba and the charleston. I was on my way to being Fred Astaire, and I had no patience for the basics of life. Thus sun leaves the farms, newfangled lives in the cities. Thus aging men put their feet up as they considered the joys of long ago. How cool is that? So this is the name of the book, The Very Stuff. It's funny, as I'm reading that, I'm thinking of my, I've been finding pictures. I don't think the picture's right here. 